Hello, I'm Dr. Rebecca Rockpotty, also known as the Girly Organist, and today I'm just going to give you some insights into Anne Lister's Organ Sonata. Anne Lister, you may also know her as BBC's Gentleman Jack, was a landowner, feminist, diarist and lesbian in the 1800s. She also happened to play the organ. She lived at Shipden Hall in Halifax and she actually played the organ at what's now Halifax Minster but was then Halifax Parish Church. This sonata is split into five movements. The first movement is a Toccata style. Think a little bit like Muley and you're on the right lines. It's interjected with almost comical dance-like rhythms and it has these dramatic chords through the whole sonata. Every time the chord comes, think of it as Anne writing and pausing for thought before she keeps writing. Because let's not forget, she wrote her whole diary in code. The second movement uses only the flutes of the organ. This is probably the simplest movement. You could play it on a, on a small two manual or even a one manual chamber organ. It explores everything that is the internal world of a person. Those quiet moments when you close the door and you're all on your own. And it has a lovely three, four, dum, ba, dum, ba, dum, ba, dum, ba motif that runs all the way through it. The third movement is called Fortunately Placed. And despite many conversations at this point about the organ sonata, I can't come up with a better word than to describe it other than to say it reminds me of Scooby-Doo because it's rather scrappy. It's an dancing, she liked to go to parties, she liked to travel, she liked culture. It encapsulates all of these elements. It's actually written in 7-8. So if you are a player who maybe fancies a rhythmic challenge, this would be perfect. It would be a great voluntary for after a morning service in ordinary time, for example. It's very much a standalone piece. And think of it as a nice little ditty. The middle section of this movement brings back those chords and pausing while she's writing. She might be here, she might be abroad, but anywhere in the world she's writing and she's pausing while she does that. There's a comical little dum bum ba cliffhanger before we go into seven, eight. The fourth movement is called Dear Diary. This is actually a really strident movement. It's very accessible. Again, great for service playing. This is where the post-minimalism organ composition style really comes out. There's almost, the middle section of this movement almost encourages you to think, oh my goodness, this is like being time warped. We're, we're in a different time. It feels like something that transcends time. Um, it doesn't have to be lots of notes to give a, an experience of um, otherworldliness. And this movement does that. And actually, it's really fun for the player as well, because, you know, it sounds really complicated, but it's quite straightforward to play, which is always a pro. I know when I'm looking at pieces, that's something that I think about. There are a few pedal solos, but I'll be honest, when I wrote this, I had actually broken my foot. So the pedal so solos are appropriately written for somebody that's just a newly healed 
broken foot, which means that they're not super difficult. And actually, uh, they work quite nicely. They're very melodic and they work nicely on their own without lots of manual things also going on. That's something to bear in mind. You know, as organists, I often think sometimes we avoid pieces because perhaps the pedal part's too difficult, but you know, that is part of the instrument. So I wanted to make sure that I could uh, include that, but it had to be in an accessible way. And actually that legacy is going to stay with the Sonata, uh, but it's a really beneficial thing for, um, maybe you're a parish organist and you're thinking, oh my goodness, I, I can't play really difficult pedal solos. Well, this will be the one for you because it's very straightforward, it's alternate toes and it just works. The last movement is called My Pleasure. And this is quite a typical final movement. It's exciting, it's big, it's grand. It would be perfect after a service, perhaps something like Nine Lessons. It wouldn't take you super long to learn either. It actually uses Halifax Handel's Halifax hymn tune. So if you know that hymn tune, what a great way to engage with your congregation or your audience. Maybe it's a hymn you sing regularly to that tune. We have this movement between duplets and triplets. Da 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 it builds such a sense of excitement and momentum with pushing the music forward all the time. Again, as in earlier movements, there are these chords that come through every time and pausing. She's pausing at, you know, different dramatic points, but she's still writing because we know that that's something that she really liked to do. The end of this piece of music ends on an A chord because, you know, it's Anne Lister, so A for Anne, um, <laughs> which is, you know, a, a very deliberate uh, thing on my part. But it's really music that's been written for contemporary listeners. You know, none of the movements are extremely long. They're all pretty uh, concise movements. They have quite a heavy pop and EDM, electronic dance music influence, because let's face it, that's what's popular. So, you know, we don't necessarily need to do organ transcriptions of electronic dance music, but we can use some of the progressions because our contemporary listeners and we're trying to encourage people to play the organ, that's what they're used to hearing. So let's just give them a little bit of that to, to hook them in to listening to more organ repertoire. and Lister's organ sonata. Maybe you want to have a copy for yourself. Maybe you want to buy a copy for a student or a friend. It would be a fantastic Christmas present. Maybe you watch the TV series and you think, wow, that was really exciting. I've now played this composition all over the country and the comment that's come back every time has been, you've caught the spirit of a person that we didn't know you've caught the spirit of a person from another time. And I think that's such an ex exciting thing to be able to do. That's what I wanted to do. That was my intention. And that's what's happened. So if you, you know, want to capture a little bit of history, then maybe this is the way to go. If you perform it, please tag me on social media. I'd love to hear your interpretations. Thank you so much.